loops and selection statements. I don't recall if we use this term exactly, but there's essentially three kinds of what's known as flow control. You know, flow is like water running through a river. Well, control flows through your program based on the if statements and the loops and the things like that. You know, so water can go to the left or the right. Well, your code can make, you know, if there's a decision, it can do one thing or the other, and then the loop can make it repeat that decision and so on. So let's talk about this. I'm just going to tack it on as a little comment. Oh, I lost my other comments about uh, the three kinds of errors. Oh, well. Three types of flow control. They're sequential, one after the other. It does that before it does that. Happens in sequence. That's why you have to have a value in a variable before you can do something with it. You can't print x until there's an x to print. Then there's another one called a decision. Those are your if statements. Some languages have something called a switch statement. Python does not. So our decision statement is an if statement. And then the third one is loops, which some textbooks would call repetition. And I think loop is a much better name than repetition. A loop is a while loop, for example. It just keeps repeating something over and over until some state is no longer true and it can stop looping. That's what this chapter is about. We've already learned sequential statements. You ask for x, and then you do something with x. You ask for the kilograms, and then you do something with the kilograms, and so on. I better close my comment with the three quotes so that if I keep adding code, <coughs> I can do so. So definitive iteration, the for loop. Repetition statements, or loops, repeat an action. Each repetition of an action is known as a pass or an iteration. Like if I'm shucking corn, each husk of corn that I shuck is an iteration. I've done it twice, it's two iterations. I've done it three times, that's three iterations. It's also known as a pass through the loop. Did I see a hand raise? Well, yes, sir. Now I was going to ask you, uh, where would the for statements go? Now, would they those, those are loops. Those are loops. Good point. Why don't we come down here and say that loops can be while and for. You have two different kinds of loops. The textbook, being brave and bold, is jumping in and doing a for loop. Because you have two different kinds of loops. You have what are known as definite loops and indefinite loops. A definite loop is one that follows a definite sequence. It counts the numbers 1 through 10, or it prints out all the items of a list. For definite loops, you use a for loop. So loops that repeat an action a predetermined number of times, that's a definite loop. And then there are those that repeat until the program determines it's time to stop. That's called an indefinite loop. Keep running while x is less than 10, right? Or keep running until the user types in negative 1. Those are indefinite loops. Definite loops are for loops. Indefinite loops are while loops. Some languages let you kind of mix those up a little bit. Pretty much in Python, we're going to say that if it's a definite loop, it's going to be a for loop. So let's throw a, uh, a loop in just like they've got here. They're being all fancy here and using the end parameter there. And they've also forgotten that you have to lowercase p that. So in main, let's do their silly example. Except I'm going to make the variable just i rather than for pass or whatever they called it. For i in range, parentheses for, in parentheses colon, print, parentheses quote, it's alive exclamation mark, end quote, in parentheses. I'm going to make my code look a little bit more like theirs in a minute. But I want to do it this way first just to prove something. There it, there it is. It ran four times because of the range statement. The range statement created a range of values for the i variable to go through. 
If we print out I, if I printed out I rather than it's alive, it would print out 0, 1, 2, 3. Because if a range statement has only one number in it, it starts counting at 0. Okay, so this silly example as shown in the PowerPoint has what's known as an optional parameter, the end parameter. End equals, quote, they had a space there, space, quote. What is that going to do? You see the difference? Let me bring it over. Without the end parameter, it went to the new next line every time. With the end parameter, it kept it all on one line. The end parameter determines, it dictates how it treats the end of the data, the end of the line, what happens when it's done printing. You could put all sorts of weird things here. Like you could put, you know, three question marks there, and then when you run it, you're going to see three question marks between everything. If you want it to work exactly like it was doing before, we added that end parameter. It's technically an argument, but it's filling in an optional parameter. I could put backslash in there, and now it's back to showing it like that, because backslash in means go to a new line. Now, a problem with the end function as they're using it is that then later on, if you print something else, It's going to show up on the same line. It's alive, it's alive, it's alive, high. A reason? It never found a reason to go to the next line. There was no print statement without this thing that disabled the new line. So if we were going to do that, we'd better put a new line, right? Something like that. Or put a backslash in there, something like that. I'm just putting this in there so that the next time I print something out, it won't be at the end of that line. And let me prove that. Print parentheses, quote, high, end quote, end parentheses. Right, it's alive, it's alive, it's alive, high. Without this print statement, high would have shown up right there, and we wouldn't have liked it. Didn't look good. So the form of this type of loop is the word for, lowercase, thank you, Mr. PowerPoint, variable. Now, you don't put the variable in angles. It's just saying that that's kind of like a fill in the blank. In range, followed by a so-called integer expression, usually just a number, right? Like 5 or 10 or x or whatever, and it would count up to x. Let's do that again, but instead of printing out it's alive, it's alive, it's alive, let's print out some numbers. Four, I better wander about and make sure that nobody has syntax errors because people are shy about interrupting me. For I in range, parentheses 10, in parentheses colon, print, parentheses quote, I equals, end quote, comma, I, in parentheses. And it printed out the values. We told it to do it 10 times. And it may seem counterintuitive, but when the Python's told to do something 10 times, it starts at 0 and goes up to 9. That is 10 times. It's just like counting from 0. It's called zero-based indexing. We can control what number to start counting at. If we say 5, comma, 10, it'll start counting at 5 rather than 0. So if I come over here and I make this say 5 comma 10 and then run it, there we go. It printed out 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It didn't print 10. I think I've already gone over that a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. It counts up to but not including the larger number. So it counts 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You can tell how many times it's going to count by just subtracting this from this one. 10 minus 5. I don't know if that's an accurate statement. Well, in this case it is. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. What if it was 0? Yeah, because 10 minus 0 is 10, so it would print out 10 numbers just starting at 0. So it 
This is the beginning point. It goes up to, but not including that. And if you include a third number, it tells it what to increment it, how much to skip. What if we say, I want to go from 5 to 20, and I want you to count by twos. So it's going to count 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, and it's going to stop at 19 because once it hits this point, it considers itself done. There, as promised, 5 through 19. The first number is a starting point. The last number specifies one past the ending point, or you know, whatever condition needs to become false. Once i is equal to 20, it's going to leave the loop. And then the third one is the step for the increment, how much to increase by each time. If I started at 10, and I go up to 101, and I increase by 10 each time, it's going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Why did I make it 101 rather than 100? What's the difference going to be? Yeah, otherwise it'd stop at 90. Bingo. And in this particular example, I wanted to see it hit 100. Count from 10 to 100 by tens. That one, that's what that's doing. I'm sorry? I said you're adding the variable zero. Yeah. OK, let me pause this, see if people right. Let's go a little bit longer. Well, let's add a comment, though. I'm going to scroll down here to the end of my comments. Two kinds of loops, indefinite and definite. Definite loops go through a series of values. You know in advance how many times they're going to go. For example, count from 1 to 10. Use four loops for definite loops. An indefinite loop runs until a condition is no longer true. While x less than 10, something like that. It'll keep going until x is no longer less than 10. Who knows? x may never become, you know, greater than 10. Use while loops. Lops, why? Uh, that was supposed to be a quote. Use, I said, quote, while loops for indefinite loops. So while x is less than 10, or you know, while user wants to keep playing, whatever. That kind of thing. Indefinite loops can become infinite loops if the condition never turns false. I'll show you what I mean. We're going to go and add an infinite loop, and then we're going to comment it out or something, because we don't want it to be an infinite loop. You know what? I bet our for loop could become an infinite loop. What if we made this number 0? Count from 10 to 101 by zeros. Add 0 to yourself each time. OK, OK. It tried to catch it. It said it better not be a 0. It's pretty smart. But what if we do this? We're going to make an infinite loop by setting a variable like x is equal to 1. And then while x is less than 10, colon, print, parentheses, quote, x equals, end quote, I think I saw a hand just a second, x equals, end quote, x, and that's going to be it. What if you would have put 0.5 up there? That would be cool, and that's in other languages support that. But Python wants these to be whole numbers. Yeah. 
When you take C or C++ or Java, you're going to see that for loops are more flexible in those languages, and you can increment by halves or whatever you want to do. Very good question. OK, so it's just going to print out x equals 1 forever. It's an indefinite loop. It's going to run until this condition is no longer true, but nothing is changing the value of x. x is going to stay 1, and so it's just going to run forever. And by forever, I mean until I cl click the close box or something. So now I'm going to comment this out because it's an infinite loop. That was an infinite loop because x never changes. So the while loop never becomes false. Right. This expression never becomes false. So instead of saying while loop, I should say while condition. I'm going to bring a different keyboard in. Keys on this are in weird places. While condition. This is the while condition right there, or the while expression. We could have easily fixed it just by tacking on x plus equals 1 underneath it, but I wanted to see an infinite loop. That's why I'm leaving it like that. So a loop to compute an exponentiation. What's an exponentiation? That's like 1 times, no, increasing powers. Like 2 to the power of 1 is that, 2 to the power of 2 is that, 2 to the power of 3 is that, 2 to the power of 4 is that, and so on. I'm not particularly fond of the way they worded that. We could come up with our own loop. I'd rather, let's just do a summation loop instead. Summation is uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Or we could write a doubling loop. Let, let's figure out what we're going to do. Let's write something that will add up all the values from 1 to 10 using a for loop. So we need a variable to hold the total. Total is equal to 0. For i in range, I just like i whenever you're doing counters. They're giving a, a, a slightly stranger name, for pass or something like that. For i in range, 1, 11, colon, so that we can count from 1 to 10. There's nothing wrong with specifying the comma 1 as the third thing. It's, a, it's assumed. All right, and then so total plus equals i. And then we can print it out. Print parentheses quote, the total of sums of 1 to 10 is end quote, comma, total. I believe it'll be 55, just from having demonstrated this program over and over. So that was written as a definite loop. And the reason I wrote it as a definite loop is because I knew the sequence, right? 1 to 10. But you can write a lot of definite loops as indefinite loops if you so choose. Oh, the book, not ready to do that yet, so why don't we leave that alone? But let's put a comment as to what's going on here. Loop to calculate summation of 1 to 10. All right, we need to stop. And we need some loop-based homework. One more example of a loop, just because we're on the topic. Dogs equals quote, no, dogs equals square brace, and let's put some names of dogs. Pluto, end quote, comma, quote, Goofy, end quote, comma, quote, Lassie, end quote, comma, quote, Rin Tin Tin, 
in quote in parentheses. Now we're going to print the dogs out. For v in dogs, and you can give it any variable name you wanted to, like name or something. For v in dogs, print parentheses v in parentheses, and it's going to print out one per line. Pluto, Goofy, Lassie, and Rintintin. What we have, what have we done? We've declared a list, a list called dogs, and the for loop is so-called iterating through the list, stepping through the list pulling out each item in turn, sticking it into the V variable so that we can print it out or do something else with it. And we did that last week or something like that, but here we go, printing Pluto, Goofy, Lassie, and Rin Tin Tin. That's another kind of definite loop, right? It's not a numeric loop, it's not counting numbers, but it's still going through a sequence of values, a predetermined sequence of values. Okay, I'm going to tab away. Sorry for guys they are still typing. <laughs> yeah, thanks. All right, so homework. Write a loop that prints all the numbers from 100 to 200. Do the same for 100 to 200 by tens. And then write a loop that will count negative. Rot row. Better do that. And then declare a list named books and then use a loop to print out all the books or movies or whatever. Now I'm going to stop it at that point because we haven't discussed anything more than that. So our homework is just going to be those first few elements, those first E steps. All right, so how do we count backwards? We just use a negative number in the for loop, right? You want to count 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. For i in range, starting at 10. Now, if I put 1 here, it's going to stop at 2. I'll do that, but then I'm going to fix it. It's going to need to be 0. So 10, comma 1, comma negative 1, colon. Print, parentheses i, end quote, and then after that, let's do print liftoff, just like we were, you know, launching a rocket back in the old days. And that's going to count from 10 to 2. I want it to go to 1, so I have to make this 1 beyond. Just like when we were going up, when we wanted to stop at 100, we made it 101. When counting down, we wanted to stop at 1, so we may make it 0. So this is going to count from 10 to 1 by negative 1s. Right? It's going to count down. All right, you should be able to do those five steps, steps uh, A through E in the homework, based on these code examples, just starting from here down the year. Or that's a counting loop right there, so you're going to need to know that one. The homework doesn't have anything to do with summation, so you can skip that one, and then you'll use that one, and then you'll use that one, except we'll reconfigure it. All right, let's stop the recording. <laughs>